All right. Thanks everyone for jumping in. Uh, as always, we have plenty of stuff to go through. Um, the first thing that I want to start is there is a major confusion going on right now with the whole project management and, and management and program management and all of that. I want to scrape that word. We're not using PM or anything like that anymore. Let's just focus on figuring out how to coordinate efficiently. And we've changed that Slack channel name to coordinators. And I'll let Mark and Daniel probably jump in with uh, some introduction as they are kind of two contradicting, um, you know, uh, personas that are constantly clashing and as a result, producing some meaningful insights through this uh, thoughtful disagreement process. That's funny. I didn't know I was a part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Daniel, why don't you start and I'll figure out if I have anything to say. You're muted. There you are. Nope. So Arthur, can you say why I'm involved while we figure out if Daniel can get his audio on? Yeah, I mean, I'm just seeing from the high level uh, different ideas kind of clashing together and you bringing a lot of input in terms of, hey, like we shouldn't focus a lot on like creating crazy spreadsheets, crazy structures and all of that because it essentially doesn't matter for the, the final output. And, you know, partially I agree. Uh, and I think partially Daniel agrees and other people also see the benefits of that. Uh, meanwhile, Daniel is kind of going from the other direction and says, like we need some structure, we need something. It doesn't have to be, you know, hierarchy or anything corporate, but it has mm -hmm. to be some form of layers, tags or keywords, something that bridges us together for more efficient coordination. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Daniel, how you doing? You, it, we That's can't it. You, you lose the fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, well, I can say a little bit about my thought, but yeah, it, Daniel, try to join from phone while Marcus. Yeah, so I mean, my philosophy is that um, there isn't a problem until somebody says there's a problem. And uh, the way that they say there's a problem is they express frustration about some process. Um, and I think that leadership should emerge as a function of solving problems that people are ill-equipped to solve themselves. Um, when it goes wrong is leadership starting to assume what problems exist or solving problems that should be solved by the, the groups themselves. And the second way that it goes wrong in my view is when leadership um, makes the problem of telling people what new solutions to do uh, instead of going in and just solving the problem. So those are the things that I'm like hyper attentive to and tend to create pushback, even if it's like ironically idealistic <laughs> because I, I purport to be, you know, driven by use case, but um, sometimes it's like theoretically use case. So it's tricky to strike that balance. But uh, Daniel and I have had a lot of off and online um, discussions about the ideas. And uh, I think what what's important here is that um, to leadership people say out publicly that when when uh, when the the big guns fight we, it's everything's okay we're we're all friends <laughs> exactly and yeah it's important context to understand that we are kind of entering this uh, new environment where we are efficient and we are self organized because we're radically blunt radically honest and we are uh, introducing kind of the things that are unusual in typical corporate or research environment where people are, uh, you know, waiting to see if someone does something or waiting to express their opinion until it completely is validated. And here we have a unique ecosystem environment where we're free to say whatever we want and it actually sets a flare, a spark that drives a fire two, three days after your opinion is voiced out. Yeah, I think that's good. Uh, I'm not, but I really can't. Daniel, you're still muted. Are. are you from the phone? Um, we used to have a thing called. Oh, I, we can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. 
Oh yeah, no, I was just gonna say, like, yeah, I think I think for for me, the thing that's really interesting about it is um, it's this mixture because I, I agree that I think the worst thing and the thing we want to avoid is having um, any sort of a, a management layer that isn't in the trenches saying, here's the way we've got to do things. This is what'll work. What we really need to do the most we can is um, be percolating the information up from the people who are doing the work to say like, what is it that you need? Um, what is it that we can be solving to help you do the work? And then trying to come up with the systems for that. And with that said, I also find um, in, you know, my, my Game of Thrones self is, is looking over the horizon of the wall and saying winter is coming and in that we're going to get this giant deluge, I think, of people and of interest and a lot of things uh, where those logistics need to be in place. And so trying to figure out how do we experiment now and how do we weave things that we'll do for the size that we are right now while also preparing ourselves so that when all of a sudden a hundred videographers come on, we have a process in mind so we can say, great, here's the person who's kind of running the videography thing. They can get you set up. They can help you see the, the structure that already exists for those people, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I, I really do think it's just that balance. And, and that the, the key thing and what I was excited about from the conversation uh, that, that Mark and I were having is that what we most need to all get as an organization is that um, the, the key thing is, is the ideas. It's us working together, having debates, disagreeing with each other, figuring out, so what's the things that, that actually functions well? Maybe trying it out, experimenting, and then iterating on that. So, so yeah, I, th I think we're actually probably all in more agreement about what, what we're doing and how we're doing it than it might seem. Um, and it's just that we're, we're each kind of taking on, it, it's, like, it's like the Bono's hat. We have different hats we're taking on in the discussion to sort of champion different positions and that that's good. That's what's needed for us to actually figure out what's going to work well. Exactly. And I think that, you know, we as an admin team really understand that as a concept, but for newcomers and people that get into Slack, they're looking at us disagreeing and they're like, what's happening here? You know, these guys have no clue what, what's going on, like what I'm doing here. So yeah, it's just important to balance that. Uh, externally and s while still experimenting and uh, doing this giant science project on w whatever structure emerges. All right, so that sounds great. Thank you guys for, for providing context. I think I'm gonna cut this clip into kind of the introduction on the coordination stuff. Um, the next step is discussing human resources challenges and team needs. And um, Daniel, communications team, Maggie, if you're here, uh, maybe you can um, uh, jump in in here. Uh, sure. So um, we've got we've got a few needs. We still have a real need for, um, and, and this is this is all around um, getting NLP specialists and a few knowledge graph folks um, in for a bunch of the different teams. So I know that VT and Geo are really looking for folks. We need some some an epidemiologist and a virologist for for Geo so that they can move forward on things. I know RISC is looking for someone to take on some of that coordination, the like administrative coordinative side. Um, and TIES is similarly looking for someone to help with, with what we had been calling PM, but really is coordination, um, as well as some help with, uh, with the virologist, epidemiologist, developer, and visualization. Um, so so and for our task teams, I know that those are some of the key needs. Uh, one of the things, let me see if I can share screen. Um, we're trying a new, Yet, yet another document, um, but we have we have one that I think is going to help us um, just assess, so that as a as an entire team we can work on coordinating. So let me know if you can see this. Yep. Okay. So, so so all this is meant to be is it's you know it it shows the different things we're going to get scored on for our Kaggle um, submissions. It has a tab for each group. And for each of those groups, it lists the specific subtasks that are there for them. And we just, we, we can, for each one, we can rate it like one to five, which is what they're gonna do. How do we feel like we're doing on it? And then we can work on figuring out, so what do we need? Like if we're a, if we're a three right now on a given uh, score, how do we make that a four? And the goal here, it's, you know, it's very much not a report card. It's not something that, that the school is sending home of how you're doing. It's a way for us to coordinate and find out. It does out look from, like one, though. It, it does, it does. But the goal is to have it so that from each team, um, it can help those coordinators figure out what do we most need in order to, to do the best, 
the best job we can. Um, and then for the rest of us to be able to scramble around and say like, you need people to help with documentation, so we're bringing on a doxygen uh, you know, expert or whatever it might be. So this is really just a way to help us identify across the board um, what are the needs in a different way. The needs document is like, in this moment, I need a virologist to help me with something. This document is, so how are we doing in terms of having our methodology well documented around geographic variations around COVID-19? Makes sense. So this is the big picture one. And I think that's, that's a good segue into what Mark wanted to um, kind of deliver in terms of his um, vision that stems from mm. his experience in data visualization and dealing with the outputs of the tasks. So I'll let Mark jump in. Yeah, and uh, let me see, maybe there's a useful way to share my screen. Um, uh, I like that introduction chat that we just had. Um, um, and one thing that might be useful to just mention, uh, I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but especially anybody who has engaged me or had me engage them in anything, you should know that, I mean, I can come off uh, aggressive. It's not because I'm trying to say your idea is dumb or anything. It's really just, um, I believe wholeheartedly that the best thing I can do is, is to give you my unfiltered opinion and, and leave it to you to make a decision. Um, Which know, may be yeah. wrong for anyone's context. We're all accepting that, yeah. but. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, Mark yeah. is amazing. He helped us so much. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. Um, uh, so but, you know, like, feel free to tell me if it's not productive for you too. And I'm, I'm not, I'm, tr I'm not trying to do that. And I'll try to be better about it. But um, that's just like a general disclaimer. If it did happen or it does happen, that's uh, just keep that in mind. And that's a great. I say that not just to finish off the previous thought, but as a segue into what we're about to talk about, which is um, me trying to put on the hat of bad cop. And, um, and systematically make a single-minded observation about our organization with a suggestion for how we can talk about improving the quality of our product. Um, so uh, if I share a screen, does it show? Oh, interesting, cool. What does it show? Is it showing it? Uh, yeah, it's adapting. showing the quality of product. Right, cool. So this is uh, quality of our product is limited by the grain of our output. That's super, uh, I don't know who in the world else talks about granularity of data. So I'm just gonna be really, really to the point here. Um, uh, every team is producing data um, in the term of, in the form of CSVs or other data structures that can always be described at least in one dimension, which is what is the unit of analysis that's happening per each row of data. Um, for most of us, the answer is paper. We are analyzing things in terms of what, uh, how similar a paper is to a certain keyword or um, how relevant it is to a certain idea or how, how good the quality is of the paper. Um, the really short and sweet, not so sweet, is that that's what Google Scholar more or less does. There are other ways to um, have, gran there are other granularities of data that are relevant, which is, so paper as row is what most of us are doing. You can also think of section as row, um, where you can answer questions like, are researchers thinking a lot about a certain topic, um, as, as, it, as appears in the introduction or discussion, but not actually testing this topic? Uh, what's something that they often test, but actually don't ever generalize or follow up with? Um, this is only answered if you take a viewpoint from um, the sections within the papers, as opposed to the papers being your data point. Um, Brandon has done some wonderful work with sentence as row and task PT has implemented this. We've seen it, but we need more of that. Um, and further, we need more than just first order approximations of what would be useful sentence as row questions. Uh, word as row, um, this is, many of us might think we're doing this because we have things like um, keywords. Those are word as row data sets. They're very rigid, they're very small, they're very helpful. Imagine how helpful they would be if we put the full force underneath rows as words. So a little tiny example that I have here, you could ask a question like considering only studies that evaluate percentage of people infected listed by the experimental variables, can I see a column of those outcomes? Like what percentages are they? And you could do all sorts of really fascinating things with those numbers. That's now obviously that's really hard data to come by and it requires a lot of cleaning. 
But these higher level questions, we need to think very carefully because right now we're very limited in our focus of papers as rows, as our outcome. Everybody who does something like filter papers for relevancy um, or have a column of similarity, it's still just papers as rows. Um, the task geo has an interesting caveat, which is that they have um, data frames where it's not rows based on the text itself. It's rows based off of points in location and time. Um, the key detail there is it's only as useful as we can link it back to one of these other text based things. Um, I wish I could elaborate more, but um, I'll make this document available. And what I'm also going to make available is um, an imminent discussion about how we can move your specific task team or develop an agenda for the global team. Um, I want that discussion to happen hopefully at the top of the next hour um, and I'll post widely for people who wanna be a part of that. Thank you. This is great. Sounds very complex and we all need some time to process that information within your document, but overall it makes sense. Uh, again, it leads to discussion uh, of, you know, what are the outputs for each of the tasks? And we may not know what they are right now, but we can actually create some dummy versions of, you know, approximations of what we think we'll be able to conclude. So that's a discussion that I would recommend uh, for each of the teams to have internally. And obviously we'll, we'll try to create some processes for, you know, all of us to collaborate on that and converge to some specific, you know, uh, structures for these dummy outputs. There is no structure yet, but I feel mm -hmm. it's coming together. Can, and I'll just put this out there. You don't have to fully understand the theory behind um, this stuff. And I didn't, I didn't get it perfect. So don't worry about that. Um, but if you do one easy way to do this, engage with this question is to ask me or ask somebody who does get it, say, all right, this is the question we're trying to answer. What's the granularity we need to answer that question? Can we get at that question with what we have? Because I think the answer is going to be, in, that's not the best way to do it for many of the questions we think we're answering. Um, so if you just raise, like, you know, put out there, what are the questions we think our product is answering? That's a, that's a, that's a plenty good starting point. And Sounds I'll good. All right. Sounds great. Let's jump into the team reporting. Uh, I'll quickly remind the structure. High level progress, quick summary, time to results, what are the, result, uh, the results so far, and blockers, what do you need help with? Go ahead, starting with uh, Maya from Risk Factors team. Uh, hello, quick uh, feedback on uh, what Mark uh, said previously. Actually, his ideas and the way he structures things uh, was the main cause for us to progress at the moment and realize that we need to focus on a semantic search rather than anything else and uh, now regarding our progress uh, we've managed to uh, create the codes that helps to create n-grams uh, we sh soon should be capable of uh, dividing n-grams into groups by diseases uh, we are focusing on heart risk uh, task and have some progress there and finally uh, found the NLP people who are ready to help us we probably still have some uh, coordination uh, slash structuring inside. So whatever, if it's not a project manager, it's probably a coordinator, uh, some person who can help us on documentation, uh, general structure, structure and trailer, things like that. Uh, uh, so far, uh, Ioannis uh, just helps me amazing. He helps me to onboard people. Uh, while I was uh, kind of assessing results and kind of gathering everything together, Guilherme is helping us to make quite a proper GitHub and integrate the code. So we are kind of moving forward, but we have to understand that it might be that we will discover that our results are not perfect and we will need another pivot. And um, this stresses me a, um, a little bit in terms that we don't have that much time to endlessly pivot. And I would like to listen in opinions uh, of other team leaders and uh, other uh, participants of the process on uh, what do you think regarding that? How about we schedule a quick 30-minute call tomorrow for team leaders to 
um, kind of discuss the high level stuff besides the, the organization stuff and just um, ideate on that. Sounds good. And also this is part of what we can discuss during um, the, the follow-up meeting that I'm going to send a link to is um, Sounds good. this kind of thing. Maybe that's the one, yeah. So, yeah. Perfect, okay, thank you. All right. And also Sounds just know, you know, if there are problems, you know, you're gonna be able to get a lot more help if you just, you know, get those results and push them out so that people can get on board and contribute. 100%. All right, so next team, Geo team, Daniel. Hi. Um, so we are currently, well, working on the various streams, but I would say maybe one of the most relevant things we're doing right now is uh, um, trying to correct some data problems that we have at our sources. So essentially some geolocation data was not uh, really clean in some of the data sets that we source. For example, you had the Netherlands smack in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And, um, you know, yeah, they are under the sea level, but not that much. Uh, so we're trying to, to clean that up. And then we progress uh, at the same time with, uh, with all the other streams. Um, I just wanted to, um, let's say, add my thoughts um, to what Daniel said earlier. Uh, on the fact that we need, uh, so I believe we need um, a virologist and an epidemiologist. Um, that would be to um, get to use the data. So let's say it's maybe two things. One is to define what data is most useful. So we're doing this in collaboration with Maya, basing ourselves on the papers, of course, but uh, an expert's opinion would, uh, you know, add, uh, um, certainty to the value of, of what we're doing. And uh, then I, I think with all the data that we're sourcing, um, there might be the possibility to do some interesting analysis, but we don't want to do that by ourselves because we're not experts in the domain and any conclusion that uh, we could extract from the data we're sourcing um, might be more harmful that, than good. I mean, if uh, if it's not extracted properly and and everything. So, um, if we want to use the data um, in addition to just source and provide the data, then we would need some experts to support us to define hypothesis to test and uh, do the whole experimental design and so on. Makes sense. All right, sounds good. Uh, next team, transmission team, Christine. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, first of all, I want to thank the Amin team that they gave us a lot of help yesterday. Uh, we now have a new join helping us kind of integrate in the notebooks, basically. And yeah, we are uh, almost ready to upload the, our search engine to GitHub. Um, and I think at the moment, I think we're talking, we're thinking about how to, you know, connect the pieces to make the overall product more, like, make sense and more coherent in a sense. So, yeah, that's what we're uh, trying to tackle at the moment. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's about it. And we will continue to work on it. Sounds good. All right, next team, uh, vaccines, Dan Salsa. Hey, everybody. Uh, some big progress from yesterday. Ben Jones is working on making the next mock-up of our data visualization uh, dashboard by incorporating like evidence type into the visualization. He's doing it in just a, a super basic way for now, but we, we can see what that actual, like how that could fit into the dashboard. So we're playing with those designs today. Um, besides that, it was a lot of like, high-level logistics stuff that was accomplished. So uh, I created a team roster, so we have a good sense of who's on the team and what kinds of capabilities we have, because there's a lot of kind of passive listeners on, on the Slack, of course. Um, Maya brought up a good point about having somebody who would be able to help with those kinds of like logistics sorts of things would be very helpful, and we don't really have someone in that role right now. It's, it's me doing all that kind of stuff. So things like onboarding, cleaning up Trello, setting up Google calendars, like all that kind of work. It, 
it takes away a bit of time for me looking at results. And so it, it would be nice to have a little bit of help on that front, but, but for now it's still fine. Um, Sounds good. Besides that though, yeah, I reorganized Trello, I added a bunch of tasks. And so now there's a lot of open tasks and we just need help with, with coders basically. So people with NLP and machine learning background would be super helpful now. And we have plenty of places to, to match them to tasks uh, at the moment. And that's all I have for now. Sounds great. Well, it, it sounds like we're making progress. There are some uh, small blockers in terms of resources. Uh, that could be uh, efficiently figured out through the proper coordinators, coordinators attached to the teams. Uh, hopefully, we'll have some time uh, to to figure out that today and attach uh, such people and start pulling people together. Uh, we are getting enough of newcomers that uh, have a lot of NLP experience, which is interesting, and like it definitely fills the gap. We just need a proper process to onboard them into individual tasks, teams. I've been doing a little bit of it manually and it kind of takes a certain structure in terms of, hey, this is the latest daily call that we had. Hey, these are the actual NLP tasks that we need to, to solve. So we, we ha have to think about some template for coordinators to start using to efficiently transform that onboarding process. All right. For me, I'm under the impression that each team is already handling onboarding. Like um, for, for V&T, for example, I have a pretty standard like, okay, here's all the things you need to focus on with regards to Trello, et cetera, for the V&T team. So I kind of have onboarding like down pat for our team. Nice. Okay. Hey, Dan, uh, if you need some extra help with that, uh, why don't we chat since I'm already doing some tasks like that at a higher level? Okay. That sounds I, good. Ha I have to tell you that, for example, another specific uh, example, the onboarding process maybe because uh, of the wrong structure but but it's not that easy because some understanding is required in terms of terminology and it kind of a little bit slows things down yeah uh, I, i'm sure it's it's going to be different for every team but there is you know different forms of that context that can be brought up and it can serve as a, as a last recording of a daily call or, you know, the discussion on Slack or discussion on Trello card. We just have to give coordinators the best way to, to find these pieces and use them to personalize that onboarding experience for people. So, so Maya, are you familiar with the Wondrous system that we have in place on Slack? Sorry? Are you familiar with the Wondrous feature that allows um, basically uh, incorporating some glossary for different uh, specific terminology? In other words, if you're talking oh, to people and they're new, they can use It's not about system. that. It's uh, about assessing. Um, it's about assessing the results and to be really capable of assessing results individually, okay? Uh, you have to kind of um, uh, have an idea uh, what is the difference between, let's say, cardiac and renal? It's something that you just uh, kind of need to realize yourself. So I, I, I don't know. Probably there are some tools that help. And if you can, like, PM me and provide me with such tools, it would be simply amazing. Oh, sure, oh, yeah. Okay. And I, I think Daniel put that together. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Yeah, for anyone that is not familiar with uh, what Shannon was mentioning, let me quickly showcase how that works. Can you guys see the, my typing input? Yep. Okay, so you can yes. type in uh, slash wonder bird, uh, which I'm sure many people were wondering what, what is that, and see the answer from wonder, which is bidirectional encoder representations from transformers, or trying... Uh, and ER named entity recognition. So just a quick FAQ uh, that you can start using for, for glossaries. Right. But uh, if I may jump in, Arthur, so um, I think for the onboarding of people um, on a high level, it can be done, you know, to distribute them to the teams, but then onboarding to specific teams should be done 
inside a specific team because the situation yeah. is evolving so rapidly that it's impossible. I would, or maybe not impossible, but it would be really much uh, to ask of a central coordination team. And yeah, that has uh, I think to it be doesn't even make so much sense. Uh, it has to be a person within the team. I 100% yeah. agree. Yeah. All right. And uh, am I coming through? I'm not sure if, if that yep, sounds muted. Are. Okay. Um, so in terms of, of what I've been trying to do for onboarding, like I, if I check in with people or I look at the needs sheet and I know, oh, okay, so, you know, Geo needs a virologist right now, then we'll, we'll see if we can find somebody who can do that. Then I just send them, I say, try such and such channel and here's the coordinator, because I figure the coordinator is going to have the best sense of where the person's needed. And then for any team where we have a Trello board that, that's fairly easy to understand and where we can see who's tasked to any given thing, um, that can then make it pretty easy for people to see where to plug in. One thing that may be useful, and don't do it if it isn't, but that if we label each of the different tabs that are on your Trello or each of the different tasks on your Trello, that can make it really easy for, say, a virologist to jump in and say, oh, okay, here's four tasks that a virologist needs input on. So, again, don't do it if it doesn't help, but that may be something that, that could help a lot. All right. Sounds good. The next point I wanted to bring up uh, is is basically the organic expert integration as it's it started to happen by by itself. Uh, there is amazing uh, guy Randall, who is MD physician that is now joining the daily calls for risk factors team, and just having him there and providing input and seeing which things resonate or which do, uh, do not is is a very important uh, you know feedback loop that each of the teams should have. So we, sh as coordinators, we should try to maximize the number of people that are uh, organically integrating into these tasks. And please remember that most of these people actually never used Slack, never used Trello, and have no clue how, how to use them. The first time Randall joined Slack, he just immediately called me on Slack because he was lost. So the, the sooner we can uh, you know, introduce these people to the simplified version of how to use Slack and how to join calls, the better and uh, the, the better quality of the integration there will be. Okay, so we still have a couple of minutes for Q&A and further feedback integration on what, what we can do better as a group. Um, if there is anyone that, that wants to speak up, um, I, I know that we haven't done the typical note-taking process uh, this call simply because I forgot and we, we probably should have someone making sure that I don't forget that. But yes, let's, let's try to um, maybe summarize the things that we talked uh, through today. Uh, maybe someone, Daniel or Alessia, can, can summarize that in a way. Uh, Alessia, do you want to take a step of that? Um, sorry, I actually have a question rather than summary regarding the uh, people that we need in, in the teams. Uh, I heard it from Maya for a few times already and from other team also. Maybe for now we can have a short list from what people do we need and we can try to find them because I saw there are a lot of them. That, that are joining? What do you think? Yep, so I think we already have those sheets or structures. I think they're not working in terms of, you know, being uh, easy to, to find and easy to use. So maybe you and Daniel can, can and Maggie, I think, is joining the coordination, coordination team to figure out something to make that easier to find. Because that sheet no, exists. No. Uh, I mean, not uh, make a sheet in somewhere, but for now uh, we have uh, Maya needs some people, Dan needs a, yeah. a, a coordinator. That's a, that's a this is a task. Yeah. Uh, this is a task that somebody can take and provide Maya a coordinator Perfect. in the team. Uh, Maya, maybe you can message me. I will try to find somebody with the experience you need and maybe Dan can do the same. Yes. That would be lovely if you PM me because I'm so lost in multiple. Okay, jobs. I will. Uh, I will message. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, no problem. I will send you a message. Uh, just 
make the list of the people you need. I will try to find uh, somebody from the list that we have already, and then maybe you can do the same. Uh, Much I, appreciated. Yeah. Oh, sounds sounds good. great. All right, sounds good. Anyone else uh, in terms of uh, questions or suggestions? I, I have a couple things. Go ahead. Um, you're, <laughs> you're, uh, congratulations on being um, a, a CEO. Um, so one thing that I, I think uh, we should quick definitely second, be careful of. Like, I don't want anyone to feel that I'm CEO of. of you're, you're, I, I'm, all I'm saying is you're, you're going to be in charge of over a thousand people next week, probably. <laughs> and I think we could definitely move away from um, being too organic. I'm not saying we should be like the board, um, although they would definitely be able to solve these problems. Um, I, I, what, what was I trying to say? I've just gotten lost now because I was, I was sure. trying to fly to New York. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see. Well, anyone can step in. I'll, I'll, I'll come back in. I, I had some ideas, but I, I don't know why I've, I've lost them now. Just, I'm, I'm also a student, so I'm kind of brain dead. No problem. I Anyone think else? I, I would say I was, I was uh, picking up what you were saying was more, more that because um, we've been talking a lot about uh, basically having enablement based coordinators is a good idea but also the fact that when we have a lot of people we need we need structure which i think we addressed earlier by the way archer i've been referring to you as the ceo also <laughs> yeah i, I just want to emphasize that you know it's really about collaborative effort there is no hierarchy as it stands there is obviously you know some weights attached to believability of how people influence different things and expertise Obviously, my believability in, you know, BERT or training BERT models is extremely low. And my, uh, you know, decision making when it comes to that is very low. So, you know, I'm, I'm op operating on the, my layer of things, which is more of like abstract thinking and high level thinking and then trying to get down to details from that. But yeah, like uh, I, the last intention that I have is to be the CEO of whatever this is and it's not a company it's not an organization it's something new that we're you know radically creating right now then you'll go and ahead. i think one, one one thing that seems useful with that is is for us we'll, we'll have our internal model and our internal terminology around what is it that we're making and we're still figuring out what that is um but then in in our external communications i think it's like it's good and fine like archer can be the ceo we have different people who are you know coordinators and whatnot just so that other organizations can get a handle on what we are and what we're doing well enough to say, cool, we'll give you, here, here's some computing resources or whatever it is. And if we say, well, we're an anarcho-syndicalist commune of various people <laughs> spread around the world, then they're going to run away. And so we, we, we need to have something that closely enough, like a virus, we need to closely enough match the keys uh, that are going to let them let us in. <laughs> I agree with that. Also, Archer, a uh, founder is a little bit less hierarchical sounding, yes. but is accurate, right? I love that. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, and by the way, I hope this is okay. I've been referring to us kind of casually to external parties as a, as a coronavirus research organization, because I think we are, even though, I mean, we may not be an official lab, but we kind of, I mean, we're, we're collaborating with people who work in labs and we have basically the purpose of research. Personally, I agree. We are trying to go in that direction for uh, in in many senses, at least. Right, and that that expresses in a very broad way a general charter that I think would appeal to a lot of people. I think this is a really fun nerd club. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> uh, and uh, there isn't a product for us to defend or worry about. Uh, so I think people can talk about it. Uh, up until we make a name for ourselves and at that point then maybe there's like you know some brand controlling that needs to happen but make this club whatever you want it yep sounds amazing all right guys uh and on this positive note i'll i'll try to wrap up the meeting it feels like we're moving somewhere in the right direction let's uh try to work uh closely together to figure out the the next steps uh, the outputs, the coordinators, the needs, all of these things that we've discussed today are extremely important. 
and obviously you know a flare here a flare there from each individual will add up to something amazing in two three days from now so please keep keep doing what you think is is right and until someone tells you that there is a better way to do it that's it all right thanks guys stay healthy stay sane and don't burn out thank you bye bye everybody uh, hold on I, uh, I should probably have that you know the the closing remark like uh all of that all of that founder of corona y right <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, okay to be less okay. official about all of these things i hope you enjoyed reading my uh, last night email which was kind of the I, i'm not sure how many people got that because of the spam filters and i i hope that as many people did but if you haven't please message me and i'll resend you the, the email because i i feel that's a good email to to hit as many people as possible all right sounds good guys thank you bye thank, thank you. you bye